If you want to build a gaming PC using only brand new parts, then this is the absolute cheapest that you can go without turning your build into a meme. Sure, you can find new parts such as an Intel Pentium CPU or DDR4 RAM clocked at 2133 megahertz, but obviously that wouldn't be recommended. Today's build is the lowest budget that I would go for a new parts build, and honestly, I might have even taken things a little too far. Either way, I'm going to show you how to build this for yourself after a quick word from today's sponsor. And real quickly, since I know my audience is always interested in saving money when building and selling gaming PCs, today's video sponsor GVG Mall can definitely help you out with that. I've worked with GVG Mall for so long now and have bought probably close to 100 keys myself and they're hooking you all up big time with the 25% off discount if you use code ZTT18 with the link in the description. GVG Mall has Windows activation keys as well as Microsoft Office, game keys for platforms like Steam and Origin, and they even have console stuff too like PSN and Xbox prepaid cards. Activating Windows couldn't be easier, just paste in the key that you get instantly after paying on the website, so remove that ugly unactivated watermark for good. Don't forget to use ZTT18 for 25% off with the link in the description. All right, so starting with the CPU, we're going with a $67 Ryzen 3 4100. You may not even know that this is a four core and eight threaded CPU because most people don't talk about the 4000 series. They didn't launch well to the public to begin with, and honestly, it's usually just not a great option. The previous gen Ryzen 3 3100 made such a splash whenever it came out, and PC builders like myself were all over it, but that in turn made the 4000 series kind of look like a huge letdown. However, if you're trying to spend as little as possible and you only want to buy parts from places like Amazon or Newegg, this is the cheapest that it really gets. We're also going to be just using the stock cooler that it came with. Trust me, this CPU cooler will have absolutely zero problems cooling a 4100. Here's a clip of us playing Fortnite and it's staying in the low to mid 60s the entire time. Now, the motherboard we're plugging into is the ASRock B450M HDV R4.0 and the absolute only reason and we're going with this is because if you search for AM4 motherboards on PC Part Picker and sort by the lowest price, this is usually the first one that comes up. For $60, we're not getting a single bell nor whistle, and the worst part is that there's only two RAM slots. That's fine for this type of build, but in order to upgrade later, we'll have to do a complete swap out of the current set that's currently in there. And speaking of which, this is another component that you'll find at the very top of PC Part Picker, and that's the silicone power value 2 by 8 gigabyte kit that's clocked at 3200 megahertz. Now, admittedly, this is the absolute cheapest DDR4 RAM kit that you can find on the brand new market, but like I said in the intro, we don't want to do that for every single component. The difference in price between like a 2400 megahertz kit and this one isn't that high, but since we will get extra performance out of this kit, I think it's worth a few extra dollars. I'm not going to lie though, this kit is pretty ugly because not only does it only have the heat spreader on just one side instead of two, but it's also on the side closest to the CPU, at least with this motherboard, so from most angles, you won't even see it. The way this packaging was set up also also bothered me to a level that I'm a bit embarrassed by. I hate how the hole in the plastic is off center like this. I usually don't get mad at that type of thing, but for whatever reason, this one got my blood boiling. Moving on though to something a bit more calming, for the SSD, we're going with the Team Group MP33, which is a Gen 3 NVMe drive, and for the first time in probably two years or so, I'm actually recommending just going with the 512 gigabyte model. Sure, if you can afford the extra 20 bucks, then by all means go with a one terabyte, and I definitely recommend you do that, but if you're trying to keep this build as absolute cheapest as possible, with only using brand new parts, this is the best way to go. You'll definitely feel that struggle whenever you go to download a few games, especially games like Call of Duty, but these are the sacrifices that we have to make for this type of build. Next up is the power supply, and here we're actually not making a sacrifice at all. We're continuing to use the MSI Mag A550BM, which I've been recommending for most of my budget builds this year. For 50 bucks, we're getting a tier C model, and it'll power everything we need it to with some room left over, so yeah, it's a great pick. Again though, you can go cheaper than this because there are some third to $40 new power supplies, but at that point, you're in the tier D, E, or F on the PSU tier list, and I definitely do not recommend doing that. Moving on, let's talk about the case, and honestly, I wouldn't have known about this one if it wasn't for our community. Over in the ZTT Discord server, we post four builds from our community every single day, and the person that manages all this let me know that a ton of you were buying and submitting builds with the Okinos Aqua 3 case. It's an all-black micro ATX option that comes with three pre-installed fans for 60 bucks over on Newegg. That's I'm definitely going to be interested in that sort of sales pitch. Now, it is a bit funky on the layout because there's actually no room for intake fans, and the single rear fan and two fans up at the top are all exhaust. This implies that it's a negative airflow setup, so instead of relying on intake fans to suck in all the fresh air from outside, these exhaust fans are essentially pulling air from any hole that it can around the case and then exhausting it out the back and top. This usually isn't an issue if it's done properly, but sometimes it can result in a bit dustier of a setup. Regardless, though, I think this case 
piece honestly looks great for the money. And when building inside of it, we didn't run into any major issues. It actually includes a four port ARGB hub in the back. So if you did have an ARGB CPU cooler, you could easily add that to this to make all four fans sync up. The hub can be controlled by either the button on the front of the case or directly into your motherboard. But the MOBO we went with is so cheap that it doesn't even have an ARGB connection. It also doesn't have a USB-C connection either. And it was pretty surprising to see that the case did come with that port. You usually don't see case manufacturers do this because they skip out on it because it costs a lot more money. It's also got a nice and big PSU basement for stuffing all the cables. And the one downside I'd say though, is that the holes for these cables to come out of are really far away from where they connect to on the motherboard. This results in a pretty funky look with these long cable runs. But to be fair, I don't think people that are interested in a sub $500 brand new build really care about that sort of thing. They only want the performance. And speaking of which, the last part we have to go over is the GPU, which will hopefully give us that performance. But unfortunately, the only thing we can really afford in this price range is the six gigabyte RTX 3050. Now don't get this twisted. I personally do not recommend the RTX 3050, like not even a little bit. Over on zttbuildhelp.com, we have several pure performance build templates that you can follow. And the cheapest one I have listed is at $550. The reason why it's higher over there compared to this video is because I don't recommend going any cheaper than a usually $200 RX 6600. Head to head against the six gigabyte RTX 3050, it performs way better. So I personally think that you should always spend the extra money to get that upgrade. However, I do realize that some of you don't want to spend that extra money and a lot of you just prefer Nvidia to begin with. So for those type of people, this is the best card to get. At the end of the day, the 3050 is still a 1080p graphics card and it can play absolutely any game you throw at it. The main reason why people like me don't like it is because there's just better options for not that much more money and sometimes even cheaper. All in all, here's what the final parts list is looking like. And as you can see, this came out to a total of $475. That does equate to a honestly pretty good looking build using only brand new parts. But at this price range, you'll have to seriously consider this versus going with a console. I personally don't have either of the newer consoles, but after watching OzTalks Hardware's recent video about daily driving an Xbox, even a super budget RTX 3050 build like this will get my vote. I'm definitely a bit biased though. But now let's jump into the benchmarks and see what this Ryzen 3 4100 and RTX 3050 can handle. Just like I said in the last video, we will have a full extended benchmarking run over on the ZTT Extras YouTube channel. Just make sure you're subscribed over there so you see the notification when that video goes live. Starting with 3D Mark's Time Spy, this $475 build cranked out a score of 4,963. And for Steel Nomad, we just cleared the 1,000 mark at 1,017. Neither of those scores are anything to write home about. For a quick reference, our cheaper $400 pure performance video got roughly double that Time Spy score, but that's of course because we were using some used parts. That's the other thing that you have to debate about when you're considering buying an all brand new parts build like this. You could either buy a console or you can go down the used parts route, which is definitely what I would recommend doing. Now, normally for these benchmarks, I'd start with a graphically demanding game such as Cyberpunk or Starfield, but I want to start with the eSport and CPU demanding games first, just to show you what we're working with. Counter-Strike 2 has already become more demanding with the latest update, but with this 4100 at 1080p in pro settings, we only got 101 FPS. Fortnite was right around the same at 99 FPS using 1080p and pro settings, but Valorant did get up there to 1080p high and still achieve around that 200 FPS mark. Remember, I don't actually recommend you go with this CPU and GPU combo, but if you want to go down this route of a super budget, all new parts build, this is what we're working with. Again, for reference in 1080p pro, our $400 pure performance build got just over double the Fortnite FPS at 210. But now let's move on to the more GPU demanding games. And here we have Modern Warfare 3 and with 1080p and basic settings, we got 89 FPS. Cyberpunk 2077 was up after that. And here we did actually clear the 60 FPS mark, but we had to drop the settings down to 1080p low. And here's First Descendant and at 1080p with low settings, we got 71 FPS. Here's the rest of the games that we tested. And for the most part, as you can see, we're using settings mostly at the 1080p low level of a gameplay experience. And as another final reminder, we'll upload the full extended benchmarking run for this CPU and GPU combo on the ZTT Extras YouTube channel. So yeah, that's what you can expect for a sub $500 all new parts bill. Personally, if you're looking to spend around this price range, I recommend saving up a bit more money for the $550 build template that I mentioned earlier, or consider buying used parts to get some extra value. Either way, at least this PC can still play everything that you throw at it. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you do want to see some of my additional thoughts on the six gigabyte RTX 3050, then feel free to click the video that's on the screen now.